yet? No. Oh, okay. Hi everyone, my name is Grace. I'm a manager here at Crew Food and Wine Bar in the Battery. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the process of making five very different worldly rosés that we carry here at our location uh, in honor of National Rosé Day, which is this Saturday, June 13th. So I'm going to start off with an American wine. This is the Dr. Constantin Frank. This is from the Finger Lakes region of New York. Uh, the grape for this is going to be Pinot Noir. Dr. Constantin Frank is considered to be the father of the Finger Lakes. He immigrated from Eastern Europe and saw the climate, saw the soil, saw the land, and thought to himself, oh, this will be great for grape growing. And he was obviously right. The Finger Lakes is one of the more predominant American regions, especially on the East Coast. So like I said, this is all Pinot Noir. Um, it's interesting because it's one grape, but there are so many different things that go into making just this one wine. For instance, both uh, or the grapes are grown in two different vineyards. So there's one just in the Finger Lakes, and then there's one in the, an area of the Finger Lakes called the Banana Belt. I just nicknamed that because it gets a lot of afternoon sun that is really, really warm. So all that extra sunlight, all that warmth really ripens up the grapes. Uh, and those grapes become juicier and provide more fruit flavors and they're a little less acidic. So when those grapes are blended with the ones from the other vineyard, it creates a more balanced and harmonious wine. Uh, there's also two processes that go into getting the juice to making the wine for this. Uh, so it's 60% direct press and then 40% saunier method. Uh, we'll start with the direct press. Uh, it pretty much explains itself. The grapes are directly pressed. Uh, the intention is to get the skin separated from the juice as quickly as possible. It's impossible to have zero contact with the skins, obviously, so they do get a really like light, delicate pink color. As you can see, this is a pretty intense pink color, so that's going to come from the Saunier method. Uh, Saunier method is not even, it wasn't intended to make rosé. It is a red wine making method. What they do is they have all this red wine juice sitting on the grapes, uh, trying to macerate. That's what it's called when it's sitting on the grape skins. Uh, and they bleed off some of that wine. So Saunier means to bleed in French. So they take some of that away and the red wine becomes more concentrated and is a much more complex wine. Uh, but the byproduct of that is all of this bled off wine. So they can either discard that or use it to make rosé. So uh, that's what they do here. Um, this is a really fruit forward wine. Uh, I think it's pretty indicative of its region. American wines do typically be, uh, tend to be more fruit forward anyways. So I think this is an excellent uh, fruit forward rosé, if that's the kind of rosé that you like. Uh, I think it's just a really nice quality one from you. All right, the next one that I will be talking about. So this is the Lafette du Rosé. This is from Provence. This is a GSM blend rosé. GSM stands for Grenache, Shiraz, Mavetra. Those are the three grapes that are used to make this. Uh, fun fact, these grapes are grown on the oldest uh, vineyard, St. Tropez, which is in that region. Um, those three grapes are really popular for Southern France. You also see them in the Rhone Valley. So these are some really, really common provincial uh, grapes. Um, so it's 80% Grenache. Uh, that's a really thin skin grape. This is uh, made using the limited maceration method, which is really similar to direct press. With limited maceration, uh, it's gonna sit on the skins. So it sits on the skins from an hour to maybe 48 hours. It really just depends on the winemaker's uh, style. So it's gonna sit on the skins, but because Grenache is really thin, the color from this wine is really gonna be from those Syrah and Mavetra grapes, so those have a much thicker skin. Um, even though it's a little darker than you would expect for a Provence Rosé, you're still gonna get those same flavor characteristics. It's still gonna be a really dry Rosé. Uh, the winemaker for this is a Miami native, um, and he spends a portion of every proceeds and to, uh, and to send underprivileged uh, kids on unique travel experiences, so that's pretty cool. Um, the vineyard in Saint-Tropez is also a sustainable vineyard, and in 2016 they were awarded a zero pesticides label. So the winemaker and the vineyard, they really care about the people, and they really care about the land that they're taking care of and the, the, where the grapes are growing. So I think this is a really nice wine. So next up is something really interesting. <laughs> This one's probably the nerdiest, uh, hippiest rosé that we have here. So this is the La Tormelas Ideal Diachnos. Uh, this is a Greek rosé. Uh, I had never had a Greek rosé, so if you're like me, come here and get this one. Um, it, stylistically, it tastes very similar to a Provence rosé, but other than that, the method is completely different. Um, this is, again, it's going to be that Saunier method, 100%. So they were using this native grape called Ayuri Tico uh, to make red wine, and they bled that off and got this rosé. Uh, it's super cool because they use uh, biodynamic practices at La Tormelas. Uh, La Tormelas is in uh, Macedonia, which is about two and a half hours north of Athens. Biodynamic is super hippie and nerdy. They pretty much believe that all of the energy in the universe is connected. And uh, they're gonna reference the planets, the stars, the moon for the entire grape growing and wine making process. 
so it predates organic. It's a very, very holistic approach to making wine. Uh, uh, not only do they do that, but they also have sheep and uh, geese that graze there during the winter. They have their own bees for pollinating. Uh, their winery is also located in the side of a mountain and they use gravity to help make the wine. So they definitely just try to use the earth's resources to make this. Uh, they have what's called root, fruit, flower, and leaf days. And that pretty much translates into if you're supposed to be pruning, if you're supposed to be watering, if it's a day to leave the vines alone, or if it's time to harvest. So uh, very nerdy and hippie. This has a little bit of a melon taste to it. Super fabulous. Come try this one out. I, I'm a fan. Next up, I have the Pasqua 11 minutes. Uh, the 11 minutes refers to how long the juice sits on the skin. So this is a very, very limited maceration time. 11 minutes is really, really short. Um, this is from Veneto in uh, northeastern Italy. Um, the grapes that they use for this one is predominantly Corvino, which is a native grape. And then they do have a little bit of Traviano de Lagana, uh, Syrah, and Carmenere. Uh, you get a lot of the floral aromatics from the Corvina. The Traviano provides like a really long finish, and Syrah gives it that fruity and a little spicy note to it. Uh, this does get some lees aging. What lees aging means is the yeast that was used during fermentation, once it dies off, the lees is the dead yeast cells basically, and they just let it sit on that for three to four months. Um, when you get these aging in white wines, a lot of times it adds flavor to it. Uh, with this rosé, it just adds a little bit of structure. You get a more kind of round mouth feel, balances out the acidity of this one. Uh, because they use the non-native grapes of Syrah and Carmenere, this can't get awarded Italian's highest level of DOC or DOCG, but this is a really high quality wine. So it does actually get awarded the IGT label, uh, which if you're familiar with Italian wines, you see a lot in like Super Tuscans as well. So super high quality wine, it just, because it's non-native, it's not, Italian prime, but it's a really, really nice wine. And now we are on to my favorite. I am a firm believer that you can never go wrong with a pink bubble. If it's your birthday, have a pink bubble. If you're drinking by the pool, drink a pink bubble. If you have a charcuterie board, pair it with a bubble. I do not think you can go wrong with this. Uh, this is the GH Mom Brut Rosé. It is from Champagne, using the Champagne method, which means it is a Champagne. Uh, if you see Champagne on something that's not from Champagne, it's not really a champagne. I'm a big stickler for that rule. It's something that I really uh, like. So this is a Brut Rosé Champagne. Um, they use the traditional champagne grapes. So you see Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier in this. Uh, and they use the champagne method to make it. Uh, champagne method starts off with the first fermentation. Uh, they're gonna ferment all of these grapes separately, get all the juice, make the first wine. The second part of the process is blending. Uh, with champagne houses, a lot of times you see that NV on the bottle, which means non-vintage. They're blending previous wines from other years. Champagne houses focus more on having a consistency throughout their whole house as opposed to having, you know, per year. Because some years for champagne grapes might not be, be the best and they'd rather have a consistent across the board as opposed to one bad year or one bad vintage. So during the blending, they're going to blend that Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier together. They're going to mix it from previous years, from this current year, uh, get it to where they think it's their consistent house flavor, uh, and then they're going to bottle it. And in the bottle, they're going to insert what's called the liquor de tirage. Uh, it's got yeast and sugar in it, and that's going to start the second fermentation. So it's in the bottle, the bottle's closed off, it's going through the other fermentation process. CO2 is a byproduct of fermentation, so when you're normally going through fermentation, it just disappears into the atmosphere, but because it's in this closed bottle, you get the bubbles. So the second fermentation is what gives you the sparkling effect. So after it goes through that part of fermentation, um, it's required by law for champagnes to be aged on the lees for 15 months. So minimum of 15 months, they're gonna sit on those dead yeast cells. Once they're done with that part of the aging, they're gonna take the bottle and kind of flip it like this, and start to slowly turn it. Uh, and what they're doing with that is called riddling and they're trying to get those yeast cells into the neck of the bottle. Uh, riddling can be done by hand, it takes a little longer. It can also be done by machine. So once all of those yeast, uh, dead yeast cells are in the neck of the bottle, they're gonna freeze it. Uh, and then do what's called disgorgement, which is typically done by machine and it's gonna get all of that dead yeast out of there. Uh, what that leaves is a little bit of open space in the neck of the bottle. They're going to top that off with some wine. Uh, the wine is to, called dosage here, depending on how sweet you want it to be. They're going to add more sugar to this wine and dosage. Uh, this is a brute, so it's not the driest, but it is one of the more dry. So it will have a little bit of sugar, but not as much as like a demi sec would have. Um, once the dosage is in there, they're going to put the cork on it and put that cage on top. 
Uh, a cage is really important to have. CO2 creates a lot of pressure. So if you didn't have that cage there, these bottles would just be going off willy-nilly and that is dangerous. So keep the cage on until you're ready to take the cork out. But there you have it for the five rosés I wanted to discuss for National Rosé Day. Uh, in honor of National Rosé Day on Saturday, um, we are doing a wine chat. It's the first wine chat we've been having since we've reopened. We're hosting that here tomorrow from 6.30 until 7.30. We'll be featuring four different French rosés. We'll be paired along with Chef Sean's Small uh, Bites. It'll be a really fun time. Go ahead and call us today to make your reservation. Uh, and other than that, come in on Saturday. Come have a rosé and pair it with one of Chef's specials. Or if you'd like to host your own rosé soiree this weekend, we are still doing 40% off to-go bottles only. So come in here, buy one or two or all five of these fun, fabulous ones and taste them with your friends. We hope you have a nice week. Cheers.